Well, it's great that you're joining us again today as we continue to work through um, James's letter to the early believers. Yesterday, um, there was that challenge. When it comes to faith, the faith we claim to have, are we the real thing? Do we say the right thing, but then fail to act? Or do we exhibit a life, a live Christ-like faith? But today, we're going to focus in on friendship, which gets a, a kind of passing mention in James. Um, but when you stop and think about what James is saying, I think it's really extraordinary and worthy of a, a bit of focus. I wonder who your friends are. Who are you thinking about when you mention the word friend? I guess we all have automatic expectations of those we call friends. We don't have to think about it. We just expect certain things of those people we would see as our friends. We don't spell out these expectations. We don't really need to talk to them through or state them. It's a relationship that has natural expectations. I guess thinking about what friendship would mean to me, I would expect my friends to be loyal and supportive and kind, willing to help, show some interest in the things that I'm interested in, uh, be with me in the tough times and be ready to celebrate when there's something good happening. I'm sure we could come up with an even longer list of these automatic expectations of friendship. Well, we're going to read from James chapter 2, 14 to 26. It's the same passage we read yesterday. James 2. 14 to 26. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Well, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions, they were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited, credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous? for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and then sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Well, James here tells us that Abraham was a friend of God. What an extraordinary thing to claim. One of God's creatures, a mere mortal human, was a friend of God. From James's perspective, we read that his faith resulted in friendship with God. This idea is mentioned in Isaiah chapter 41, where God is talking about the nation of Israel being descendants of his friend Abraham. Now, surely, if, the, if these descendants of Abraham exhibit the same faith, well, then that makes them friends of God too. And then it follows that we... Because we have faith through Jesus, well, we're grafted into the family of God, the New Testament tells us. We're grafted into Abraham's faith family. Well, then it follows that we too must be friends of God through our faith. I wonder if you have ever considered God as your friend. Of course, we can't see that in isolation of the other ways we relate to God. Um, God is our Lord. God is our judge. God is our saviour, our healer. We could carry on. But here James and Isaiah both are saying that the living greater God is our friend. Well, like I said at the beginning, you know, when we think about friendships, there's an automatic assumed expectation in those friendships, in those relationships, isn't there? There's certain things we expect 
from our friends. And I think that's the same with God. If God is our friend, if that really means something, then there is an assumed expectation in that relationship. I think Jesus talks about this in his conversation with his disciples in John chapter 15. He says to them, look, you are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I've made known to you. In this passage, Jesus is inviting the disciples, the followers, to join him and the father in their mission. He shared everything with them. It had become their mission too. And he says to them, look, this shared task means that we are friends. Well, this news should excite us, shouldn't it? Our faith and belief should produce kingdom fruit in our lives. But alongside that, we have a friendship with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He invites us to share his tasks, to join with him in his mission as his friends. That should encourage us to actively live out our faith, shouldn't it? Knowing that we have a friend in God. And may God bless us as we ponder this exciting news today. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.